the record of 2 and 0. Audubon picking up a win last week, beating Haddon Heights by a score of 7 to 6, but that's been the only offense all season long so far for the Green Wave. They were shut out by Collingswood in the first game of the year. And so they will be continuing to try to find a way to get some points on the board here this afternoon. And they'll get first opportunity as it. As you can see some of the receiving team back ready to receive. That was Randy Robbins back there for Audubon. Back deep, number 22 for the Green Wave is Joe Hack. Pearson, pretty good place kicker for Sterling, will pace it off and get ready to start this ball game with the opening kickoff. Pearson's kick is deep. Back to receive it and nearly muffing the, the uh, catch was Ed Guida. He's got the football across the 20 yard line and will be hit hard at the 25. He fumbled the ball. Let's see if they give it right back to Audubon. They do. And so the Green Wave gets set to start offensively. Their starting lineup this afternoon. Up front, it's Jimmy Hewitt, along with Kevin Scully, John Seft, Dennis Keefe, and Steve Mertz on the offensive line. The split end is John Watson, the tight end, Jay Bozarth. And in the backfield, the sophomore quarterback, Joe Callahan, along with Ed Guida, Joe Hack, and Sean Cahoon in the backfield. We'll give you the defensive unit for Sterling in just a moment. Here's the first play from scrimmage this afternoon. First and 10 for the Green Wave at the 26-yard line. A fumble on the snap. Now, that's interesting because this afternoon, Audubon running with a new center and a new quarterback, and sometimes you can have some... The quarterback-center exchange is one of the most important elements of the offense. If you don't make a clear exchange, it could prove to cost you. All right, defensively for Sterling this afternoon, Dave Pearson right in the middle of this 5-2 defense. Up front also, it's uh, Steve Moradis, Brian Prince, Ryan Burdick, and a linebacker along with Devin Carter, Ernie Stewart, the big left tackle, number 99, Chris Winters, and then Jim Chapman also on the front line. That goes for a loss, that play. In the defensive backfield, it's Joe Brady and Mike Back Booth along with Derek Harry, Hardware. Carter. Loss of two, third and 12. Football at the 25. Well, long third down coming up for Audubon, unable to move here in the first couple of plays. It'll be third and 12 for the Green Wave. The sophomore, number 17, Joe Callahan, playing in place of the injured Steve McFadden. McFadden hurt his shoulder. He did the return to the lineup in a couple of weeks. First pass of the afternoon. A little overthrown as open out there was John Watson, but Callahan overthrew both he and the defender. The offensive line gave Callahan a lot of time on that play, but he just overshot him. I think once they get warmed up, he could start hitting his target a little more. Yeah, that could have been a big play for Audubon. Not only was it third and 12, but they also had a receiver one on one and the man was open. The ball just not able to be found in the pocket that time. So on fourth and 12, the Green Wave will punt it away. Ed Guida standing back on his 10 yard line. There's a look at Derek Hardware momentarily, number 12 for Sterling. Guida the punter. A low snap, but he fields it pretty cleanly. The ball is blocked. Number 33, Devin Carter in on it, and Sterling has the ball inside the Audubon five yard line. Hey, Jack, that's what good teams do. They come at you on special teams as well as offensive and defense. And uh, on that particular play, he made great penetration, and he made the kicker pay. Boy, Carter came into this punt absolutely untouched. And now Sterling, with this very potent ground attack, has it first and goal on the seven, and caught the six and a half yard line. If you are Audubon, this is definitely not how you have envisioned starting this ball game. Sterling will have to use a timeout. I don't even think they were prepared offensively. We are at least with their lineup and we'll give it to you right after this timeout. Stay with us.
Sterling appears to have uh, straightened things out and will take over first and goal with the ball on the six yard line after their timeout that they had to use. Of course, that's the first time out, just 9.52 remaining here in the first quarter. And the first threat by either team after the block punt by Sterling. Santana with the handoff and untouched into the end zone goes John Fox. When you talk about an offense that doesn't use too many flashy calls or flashy uh, plays, the basic thing that you want to concentrate on is execution. That's one thing that Sterling does exceptionally well. And as we saw in that play, Fox just walks right into the end zone. Outstanding up front, as you, we mentioned, Fox went in untouched. John, the leading scorer in the Colonial Conference so far this season. He's got 42 points, and with that touchdown, has 48. And another Sterling timeout. More confusion on the play. Here's a look at the touchdown. There we see Fox come right through the gap, tackle and guard. Just walks right into the end zone. Nice blocking up front. So after the timeout, they'll try the extra point conversion. Dave Pearson, the place kicker, in to try the extra point attempt. All right, let's go, Pearson. Sterling leads it. Six nothing. Just a little over two minutes gone in the ball game. Just joined us. Audubon came out two, three, and out on their first possession. The Sterling squad with a blocked punt. A touchdown on one offensive play. And with the extra point, they lead it seven to nothing. 9.49 remaining here in the first quarter. If you're Sterling, you have to be very confident in yourself right now. Your special teams came up with a big play, and now your offense just put it in on the first play from the line of scrimmage. Well, Coach Gallagher, Scott, said something interesting, I think, in our pregame interviews, and that was that he didn't want to look past this third game of the season. They have a lot on their mind, a lot of goals. Of course, they would include getting back to that Group 2 championship, perhaps, again this season. And uh, sometimes as a football team, you, you have a tendency to come out flat against teams that you know you should beat. That certainly would be the case here this afternoon against Audubon, and they definitely have not done that as far as coming out flat. They come out block a punt and quickly convert it into seven points and have with that uh, as we said just the 2 11 off the clock Audubon needs to get some good field position on this they need to take some time off the clock because you don't want to turn the ball back over to a potent offense like Sterling's Pearson again will step it off he did this just moments ago there's hack deep for Audubon Pearson's kick, another line drive job that will bounce at the 15. In fact, it takes a Sterling bounce. Somebody's got to get on it. And finally, Randy Robbins grabs it for Audubon and is tackled quickly at the 26-yard line. Officials for this afternoon's contest, the referee is Steve Chase, the umpire George Schools. The lineman is Joe Smariglio, the line judge Carmel Marina, the back judge Joe Woolison and the clock operator is Dan Lysak. By the way, our best to Willard Bisbing, longtime clock official in the Referees Association here in South Jersey. Biz, uh, we wish you the best. Uh, Biz has been taken ill, and our thoughts and prayers are certainly with him at this time. Another short gain, this time by Kevin Reed. Bring up second down and nine. The offensive line of Audubon is not sustaining their blocks up front. You have some big guys on Sterling, but what you like to do is you like to maintain your blocks and give the offensive back a chance to make his cut back and get some yards. Callahan sets the offense. Pitch again to Reed. Left side, a little bit more running room this time as Reed gets out to the 32-yard line, a pickup of five. That was a nice job of the on offense on that play. We saw Dennis Keefe and Steve Mertz there on the, on the left side get some nice blocking and allowed Reed to pick up some good yardage. 
we have given uh, the credit to Reed running the football. It's been Sean Cahoon, uh, the official program that we were given, uh, had his number incorrectly listed as number 20. Cahoon, who is the starter, is number 21. They'll throw on third and four. Little dump pass out to number 44, Ed Guida, and uh, he meets another 44, a pretty good one in Ryan Barickian, who stops him about three yards shot short of the first down. Take a look at this hit by Barickian. Look at the quarterback. He's dropping back here. He throws, and look at Barickian just come up and lay him out. Nice job. Ryan Brookian was uh, first team all conference last year in the Colonial Conference, second team all South Jersey, and uh, Guida just now recovering from that big hit by Barickian. Barickian is a big hitter for the Sterling team there, and as we saw right that particular play, he has great speed and he accelerated right through the hit, and that's what you like to do. So another punt for Audubon on fourth and three Joe Hack back at his 20 yard line last time Audubon tried this they had it blocked and that's why the Sterling leads it seven to nothing <laughs> see if they can get it off clean last time it was Carter around right side last time this time he's blocked but a bad snap and Carter nearly got to it again this ball will be fielded at the 40 yard line and dropped immediately is number 11 Andre Boyer. Here's the starting offensive lineup for Sterling. They were out only for one play and that was the uh, score by Fox. But here you have it in the uh, wing tee offense at left tackle. It's be the left guard is Tim Delaney. The center Dio Diamato. Jim Blackinson on the right side along with Mike Wynn. The tight end is Kevin Bradley. The split end to Ron Cooper in the slot. It's Cliff Jones and again that experienced back Field. The quarterback Dave Santana, the fullback Joe Miller, and of course John Fox, who we already saw, saw put uh, six points on the board. Defensively for Audubon this afternoon at defensive end Steve Mertz, the tackle is Jim Hewitt along with Dennis Keefe. The other end Joe Hack, the linebackers Dale and Darren Hale along with Ed Guida. On the outside linebacker position, it's Kevin Reed along with Scott Grease. And in the backfield defensively, John Watson, Sean Cahoon, and Tim Kraus. A clipping penalty on the punt, so uh, the ball is put back, and here goes Fox again. John Fox across midfield, finally tackled at about the 44-yard line. But another big pickup for John Fox of 31 yards on the play. Here we go. It's a counter trade there, and then we see Fox cut up the middle, and he's gone. That was a nice job by Adam Presby and Tim Delaney to spring him, and uh, once Fox gets rolling, there's no stopping him. Well, John Fox averaging over 140 yards a ball game in the first two contests here at 93, and he's certainly off to a good start. Two carries, about 39 yards, and one touchdown. He gets it again and again. He picks up 10, 12, maybe 13. 13 yards, another Sterling first down. That time they ran to the right side over Jim Blackinson and Mike Wynn. That was a nice job of blocking over there to spring Fox for another gain of eight. John Fox well on his way to another 100 plus day if he can keep up this pace. Sterling has it first and 10 on the Audubon 32 yard. Santana this time the give to the fullback, and Joe Miller is ahead Joe for about Miller two to the 30-yard line. And on that tackle, number 67. Sterling showing the variety as far as the backfield is concerned. They ran Fox a couple times for some for some big gains, and then they slipped the ball off in the middle to uh, Joe Miller, who's a big guy. He is a load at 6'2", 235, one of the bigger fullbacks in all of the South Jersey. This time they split the backs. In motion is Cliff Jones, and they will give it to Jones out of that slot position. He's ahead for five to the 25. Sterling has a great deal of speed on their offensive ball club there. As we see Jones take the handoff around the side, he just accelerates past the point of uh, the tacklers on Audubon. Actually, they marked uh, that time Jones's forward progress to the 23-yard line. It'll bring up third down and less than a yard for the Silver Knights. Midway through this first quarter of play, 7 nothing. Sterling with the lead and the football.
They give to Fox, and he looks like he's got enough first for the first down. He needed to get to the 21, and looked like his forward progress had him maybe to the 20 yard line. Let's see where they mark it, just outside the 20, and it looks like it will be enough for the first down. That was a nice job of Egita coming up from the linebacker position to stop Fox in his tracks. Not too many people can do that on the first shot, and uh, Egita did a nice job of making the play. So another first down for Sterling. Give the Fox over the right side, another big hole. John Fox inside the 10 yard line, all the way to the five before he stopped a pickup of 15 yards for John. John Fox, 5'10 at 190 pounds, just really steamrolls when he hits you. As you saw him go to the right side, uh, Blackinson and Wynn are giving tremendous support and blocking over there to allow Fox to make the cutback and get the great and get the great yardage. Tim Krause made another tackle for Audubon, but if you're a defensive coach, you don't like him making a lot of tackles. He's the cornerback. That means it's too late. Fox trips across the five, gets the ball down to the one yard line, but there is a flag in the backfield and the uh, preliminary indication looks like it's gonna be the legal procedure against the Knights. Here we see Santana handed off to Fox. Great individual effort, taking the ball down to the one, but they had a penalty. So yeah. that's gonna bring it back. And uh, you were not able to see, but uh, there was a legal procedure on that play. Here's to be an illegal procedure penalty against Sterling, moving the football. Well, that'll move it back fives and uh, make it first and goal from the 12 and a half down. Gallagher not too pleased with that sequence of events. Of course, the way they've been running through that Audubon defense, uh, first and goal from the 12, uh, probably not a big hurdle. So far, Fox has five carries for 66 yards. Make it and six one and another touchdown. John Fox, his second touchdown of the afternoon. This one from 12 yards out. And so far, it is all Sterling. If you're Sterling, you have to pride yourself on the execution on the part of not only the lineman, but the backs running where the hole is. There we see Fox take the handoff right up the middle there, and he, he goes in practically untouched. So 13 nothing Sterling, and they'll try to add to that total as Pearson is extra point attempt. This one is blocked. Nice play in there by Sean Cahoon. And the score will remain at 13 nothing. 406 remaining here in the first quarter. That was a nice job of Audubon special teams coming up with a big play. As we're going to see it again, Pearson lines up for the, what looks like an easy extra point there, and we see Cahoon come right in and block it. Nice job. But nevertheless, Sterling with a very impressive drive. They were even penalized to start that drive. And of course, it was all John Fox and all Sterling in that sequence events. Fox running one time for 32 yards in that drive, and of course scoring from 12. Already in the ball game, he's got six carries, 79 yards, and two touchdowns. That's quite a start when you've only what uh, ticked off about eight minutes. I like, game to clock. I like to point out that Fox has been running exceptional, not only through the blocking of his offensive line, but also uh, He's been getting great supporting blocks from his fullback. That ball will be a touchback as it went through the hands of Joe Hack into the end zone. Touchdown in the end zone by number 22. Joe Hack. So they'll bring it back out to the 20-yard line at the Green Wave. will start there first and 10. They've been unable so far offensively to pick up a first down in their first two possessions. And they'll give it another try here. But already down 13 to nothing on the scoreboard. This is a crucial possession for Audubon right now. They like to, they have to put some points on the board. Judicial position being down this this much uh, this early on in the ball game. Callahan 
with the pitch to Cahoon. He gets outside, has a little break. Carter stops him just shy of the 24-yard line for a pickup of four. It was a nice job of Audubon's offense. Over there on the left side, Dennis Keefe and Steve Murch uh, doing a nice job on the Sterling defense to give Cahoon an opportunity to get some yards. Official timeout. It looks like Cahoon was shaken up on the play, and he'll go to the sideline. Well, they don't need Scott Cahoon to go down. Uh, Audubon has been plagued with uh, injuries and illness over the past couple of weeks. Now their starting running back is headed to the sideline. We'll have to hope he's okay. Long count and a fumbled snap again. Second time that they've had problems with that today. Sterling thinks they've recovered the football. We'll wait for the official signal. And it looks like Audubon has it back, but uh, they lose a yard on the play. It'll bring up third and seven. You, you hate to see that early on in the game if you're Audubon's head coach. Uh, the quarterback center exchange, as I mentioned earlier, is very important. Um, you have to get the offensive started and you have to get them rolling. You can't do that when the ball's on the ground. Go with a single back this time. Four wide receivers. Pass is out the flat, intercepted. Picked off out there by Mike Booth, who just stepped inside the intended receiver and made the play. That was a nice job by the Sterling defense. In, in, in the past three appearances on the field, they're, they're not giving Audubon the chance to do anything. They're not giving them a chance to throw the ball. They're denying them the run. And there we saw a huge interception on the part of Mike Booth. Sterling again with excellent field position. They start on the Audubon 25-yard line. A little misdirection play this time, and they give it to the fullback right up the middle. Joe Miller. And Miller is ahead for a gain of six. six by Once you get big Joe Miller going up, up the middle, it's hard to bring him down when he's running square up through the gap. As we mentioned before, he's a big guy at 6'3", 228. And Audubon will use a timeout. First timeout called by the Green Wave. The Sapterling has already used two. It'll stop the clock with 153. 13-0. The score, Sterling in the lead. If basic instinct made you hot. You sleep in the nude. Only when I'm naked. Silence of the Lambs made you scream. Look who's Mr. Scaredy Pants now. And the Weapon series made you cheer. Oh, just kidding. We honestly don't care. These matches say you're lying. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. I'm driving. I'm driving. I'm driving. Okay. Rated PG-13. October on Garden State Cable's pay-per-view service. Second and four after the timeout by Audubon. Clock will start on the snap. 153 left here in the first. Miller with a big hole over the left side. And the fullback drags two or three people down to about the six-yard line. Stop finally made by John Watson. Blackinson and Wynn have been having a tremendous blocking. Um, not only have they been springing Fox for some great yardage, but now Joe Miller's starting to get the ball a little more and get some more, more yards as well. So another first and goal for the Silver Knights. This time the ball at about their six yard line. Let's see if they give it back to Fox who already has two touchdowns this afternoon. No, they'll keep it on the ground with Miller and Miller drives that ball down to the one yard line. Dio Diamato did a real nice job at the center position of sealing the gap off there to spring Miller again for a gain of five. They actually mark his forward progress stopped at about two, where it's second and goal. Miller, Carter, and Fox in the backfield. It's to Miller again, and Joe Miller with his first touchdown this afternoon from two yards out, and Sterling adds to their lead. We're going to see that again. 
Here we see uh, Miller go right up the middle, dragging a last defender <laughs> across the goal line. That's a very unselfish offense there on the part of Gallagher. Uh, he wants to vary it up and give each running back the opportunity to, to strut their stuff. So 19 nothing as Pearson comes on and tries to tack on one more. Extra point was blocked last time. This time it's through the uprights. And with 54 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, Sterling out to a 20 to nothing lead. Sterling has been almost flawless as far as the offensive execution is concerned. They've taken each of their They've teach, they should have possessions down the field, just march right down over the Audubon defense, and uh, they have 20 points to show for it. Yeah, I know there's been a, uh, a lot of talk uh, from fans at times here at Sterling as to why Coach Gallagher doesn't throw the football a little bit more. <laughs> I think you're getting a pretty good answer back to that here this afternoon. Don't have to throw it when you can move it on the ground like this. Plus, as he ma mentioned, uh, you know, when you can use up the field in yardage and burn up the clock, uh, I mean, that's a perfect combination. And they've done that here in the first quarter, leading it 20 to nothing with just 54 seconds remaining. The offensive line has done a spectacular job thus far in the game, just manhandling the Audubon defense. Again, Pearson having a problem with uh, the T here this afternoon. I put that as straight up and down as he possibly can. But uh, a couple of times on his kickoffs, or at least his kickoff attempts, the ball has fallen off the tee. This time, he'll use a holder, and Theron Shepard Cooper will put a finger on it, and Pearson will kick it away. Cahoon fields it out the 14-yard line for the green wave across the 20 to the 25 and stop there before he can get much further by number 64, Tim Delaney. Audubon needs right now to establish themselves more than any time ever as far as offensive unit. They've, they've went three downs and out for every possession except for the interception. And it's been a tough start for sophomore quarterback Joe Callahan. A couple of incompletes, an interception, which just set up Sterling's last touchdown. They'll try to here, first and 10. At the 23, pitch back is to Cahoon. And he gets across the 32-yard line. The Audubon offensive line just isn't sustaining their blocks long enough for Cahoon or Gita to, to get any large gains. I mean, four yards a pop isn't bad, but they have to sustain their blocking just a little longer if they're going to make a big play happen. Well, that was one of the largest gains of the afternoon so far, and they'll have to hope that they can keep that kind of offense going. We're through with one quarter of play here from Sterling. It's the Silver Knights 20, the Audubon Green Wave nothing. Hey, batter. At Grand Slam USA, we'll sharpen up your skills in our state-of-the-art batting cages. They deliver accurate, adjustable speed pitches, and our instructors are pitching specialists. Equipment? Our pro shop is loaded with top-quality gear and expert salespeople. There's even a snack bar. Softball, too. So make your next hit at a Grand Slam USA near you. Come to Grand Slam USA in Mount Laurel, 866-2077. Back at Summerdale, New Jersey, Jack Hibbert along with Scott Taylor. And a 20-0 lead for the Sterling Silver Knights as we start the second quarter of play. Scott, it was all Sterling in that first quarter behind the running of John Fox and Joe Miller. Yeah, Sterling came out here. Uh, they didn't come out here complacent being 2-0. Um, they came out here ready to win another ball game, and that's exactly what they're doing. And uh, the trouble continues for Audubon. A fumble on the play, and Sterling has recovered inside the Green Wave 35-yard line. Dave Pearson in your picture there, coming up with a fumble. Tonight football in Audubon territory at the Wave 33. Audubon's defense hasn't been doing... Uh, 
a very good job of containing the running of Fox and Miller. What they, what they need to do now is they need to step up and they need to stop them here. They learn Fox, Fox in the eye. They give it to John Fox, and again, he dances through the defense. Picks up about nine, tripped up as he crossed the 25-yard line. They'll mark it at the 24, second and one. What can you say about Sterling's offense thus far? I mean, they're not very flashy, but they execute extremely well. And as we're seeing, they're just giving the running back every opportunity to make, make uh, good gains. And the backs are taking advantage of it. This time it's Jones out of the slot with a handoff. And Cliff Jones has the first down as he gets down to the 16-yard line. Another big pickup for the Silver Knights. Jones with eight on the carry. First down, Sterling. defensive line is just getting blown off the ball, and that's the bottom line. Um, the games are won and lost on the offensive and defensive lines, and Audubon's defensive line just isn't getting penetration or not um, stringing the plays out. John Fox again with the carry. Takes a big hit that time from the middle of the Audubon defense. That's one thing you don't want to see. You don't want to see any of your defensive backs making the plays. And um, that's exactly what's been happening for the part of Audubon. I mean, the running back is just shooting right up the middle, past the line, past the linebackers. And uh, the defensive backs and cornerbacks sort of are forced to make the plays. Second and five to Miller this time. He spins, but is caught after only a gain of a couple. Bring up third down and about two and a half for the Silver Knights. That was a nice job of Dennis Keefe and Ed Gaida uh, getting some penetration in there, stopping Miller for a uh, minimal gain of two. That's what you like to. That's what you like to see if you're uh, Audubon's head coach. You like to see him start stuffing the gaps and start making the plays in the backfield or in the line of scrimmage. John Fox may have been stopped short of a first down this time on a nifty defensive stop by number 71, Dennis Keith. That was an excellent job of getting penetration, as I just mentioned. Uh, Dennis Keith is stepping up along with that guy there to make the big plays thus far in the series. But with a 20-0 lead and a potent ground attack, Sterling will quickly bring it right back to the line of scruff and less than a yard. Miller, or rather Fox, hit in the backfield, but then he pushes himself forward and has a first and goal as he gets the ball all the way down to the one-yard line. John Fox is a very, very tough runner to bring down. Uh, he doesn't give you much of his body to make a nice clean hit or even a latch on or something. He, he's very elusive and also very strong. First and goal, less than a yard. Fox already over 100 yards this afternoon. Unofficially 103 on the day. And they'll give it right back to him for his third touchdown of the afternoon. John Fox in from a yard out. And again, Sterling uses a Audubon mistake and runs it right down the field for another six. If you're Coach Gallagher, this is what you like to see. You can practically run whatever you want in your offensive repertoire and, and, and make something out of it. Um, they've been running their very basic plays, which um, has been successful just due to the, the amount of execution. So Pearson will once again try to convert. He's getting a workout here this afternoon on extra points alone. Kick is up and good. And with 8.47 remaining here in the first half, 27-0 Sterling. Audubon, no, no matter how, how their confidence might be tainted at this point, they have to go in there and they have to start trying to take away some of the momentum of Sterling, which is going to be hard when you're down 27 to nothing. They need to get on the scoreboard more than anything else at this point. Because if Sterling goes into halftime with this momentum and uh, this large of a lead, it, it could get real ugly half. Just to tell you how Sterling has dominated this ball game on the ground so far here. We have played just a, a little bit more than a quarter. And the Silver Knights 
already have about 150 yards rushing on the ground. And we mentioned Fox with 104 of those yards. David Pearson set to kick off. And three touchdowns for the senior. So Pearson with his fourth kickoff so far of the first half. Twenty-seven nothing. Every time Sterling has touched the ball this afternoon, they have put it in the end zone. And at that pace, it's going to be a long day for all. Joe Hack back at his 10-yard line, ready to receive the kick. It's kicked to the corner and will go out of bounds. Penalty flag will be thrown. And Audubon will most likely take over this football at the 35-yard line with a first down. That's one of the few mistakes that Sterling's made all afternoon. I mean, they've been practically flawless offensively and defensively, coming up with big plays on both. A look at our referee, Steve Chase, marking off the yardage. And Audubon will try to get something going offensively. The Green Wave have yet to pick up a first down in this first half. I'm like a flower. And very few offensives, obviously. Man in motion is Cahoon. They'll look to throw. In the flat, had an open receiver once again, did Callahan, but it was, uh, again, off the mark. Jay Bozarth was there and wide open. The bottom line is uh, Sterling's defense is just doing a spectacular job of making penetration and forcing uh, Callahan to throw the ball a little bit earlier than he expects to, which results in uh, you know him throwing off cue. Second and 10 after the incomplete. Callahan will once again set the offense. Backs are in the eye. Receiver split left and right. The pitch to Cahoon, and he stopped shy of the original line of scrimmage. In fact, he'll be thrown for a loss of a yard. Third and long for Audubon. I think the Audubon running backs are starting to get a little frustrated now. Um, they're not getting very much help up front, simply for the fact that Sterling has a pretty big defensive line, and Audubon is definitely over overmatch as far as size. So probably another passing situation for Callahan, who's yet to complete a pass here this afternoon. Third down and 11. Pressure from Ernest Stewart. And pass completed near the first down marker. We'll have to see where they mark the ball. John Watson made the reception at the 47-yard line, and I think that is enough for a first down. That was one of the best plays um, as far as execution is concerned for Audubon um, on that play. Watson did a nice job of staying in bounds and making the big catch there. Callahan delivered his first pass on the money. Half first down of this half for Audubon. I think this is their best field position, if I'm not mistaken, in the afternoon. Ball on their own 46-yard line. Callahan again will look to throw. He gets it out in the flat and again open out there. Pushed out of bounds is Jay Bozarth. The tight end with his first reception this afternoon. As a matter of fact, they say Bozarth stepped out of bounds at the... 47 yard line, so a pickup of only two. What we're starting to see is Audubon vary up their offense a little bit. They were giving the short dives and the pitches. Now they're starting to go to the short passing game, which is starting to prove to be a little bit effective. Second and eight. Callahan again will roll out, look to throw. He gets the ball out quickly. Again, an open receiver. This time it is incomplete as both Zarth was unable to hang football. Callahan, as we mentioned, is a young quarterback. He's a sophomore. He has tremendous height at 6'2", 
at 165 pounds, but on that particular play, he rolled out to his right and uh, kind of threw off the back foot and didn't get all of that he wanted on that ball, and that's why it was incomplete. So third down and eight. And the young sophomore quarterback will probably throw again. This time he rolls to his left. As again, an open man right through the hands of John Watson. In Watson's defense, he had to come back a little bit for the football, but that's a catch that you expect the young man to make. That ball was almost intercepted by Ryan Lewis. Um, once the ball passed through uh, Bozar's hands, uh, the ball hit, hit him right in the hands with it, but he couldn't come up with it. I think it surprised him. So on fourth and eight, Audubon will punt the football. Dave Santana in your screen momentarily. Guida will kick it away. Good snap, not much pressure. A high kick, not a long one. It'll take a bounce at the 27-yard line out of bounds. There's a big hit down there, and as you see, in the back of your screen. It's one thing when you're in coverage, you have to you have to keep your eyes open all at all times. And I think um, a lot of times when a ball's not being returned, you tend to slack off and therefore slow up. And uh, if you're on a receiving team, it's just open game. Steve Mertz was momentarily stunned. He looks like he's okay as he made his way to the sideline. Tough afternoon so far for this guy. Paul Franz has seen his team fall behind. 27 nothing here in the first half. The Audubon defense has been unable to stop Sterling on any of their possessions here in the first half. John Fox has been the main reason for that, and Fox, Fox again will pick up four or five yards, gets the ball out to the 33. He's second in five. Fox is having a tremendous day today. I mean, as we mentioned before, he has tremendous size and speed. And uh, he's utilizing not only the blocking of his offensive line to the fullest, but um, Miller's giving him great blocking as well. Second and five, Jones in motion. They'll give it to the fullback, Miller. And uh, Joe is able only to pick up about a yard. Fullback Joe Miller. Ball marks just shy of the 35. Audubon's been lacking some consistency, well, as we know on offense, but also on defense. I mean, they'll stop, they'll stop Sterling for a small game, but yet they'll give up eight yards to ten yards on the next play. And that's what's been hurting them. They, they need to start being a little more consistent. John Fox trying to pick up the first down, but he stopped shy as he's only able to get to the 37-yard line. And here comes the first punt of the afternoon for Sterling. They put every other possession in the end zone, but this time they'll have to punt it away. That was a nice defensive stand on the part of Audubon. That's what we've, that's what we've been talking about all afternoon, and um, that's what they've needed to do, maybe to boost their confidence. I don't know, but they need to get something rolling. Brian Prince will punt this one from his own 20-yard line. Good snap. Not a very good kick. Takes a line drive, but a good Sterling bounce as it will get down to the 35 of Audubon before being touched down. Ends up being a 26-yard punt, but it could have been a lot worse. Uh, that was a low line drive that was almost blocked. Audubon's feeling uh, the wrath, not only on offense and defense, but on their special teams as well. They've been playing kind of subpar this afternoon. Clock running, just under five and a half minutes to play here in the first half. 27-0, Sterling with the lead. Rolling to his left is Callahan, an open man momentarily. Good defensive play, though, by Ryan Lewis, who came up. That ball was in the air a long time, and Lewis nearly picked it off. That was a nice job of Lewis uh, coming up to make that play. He almost made it, he almost made it for an interception, but um, he didn't wait for the ball to be caught before he started his momentum. He, he knew that the ball was hanging up there and that he could possibly intercept, and if he did, there was nothing but sidelines. 
Second and 10 after the incomplete. Max again in the eye, receivers split left and right. The pitch this time to Cahoon, and he picks up maybe two. Stopped on the play out there by number 77, Dietrich Brockett. That was a nice job of stringing the play out on the part of Sterling's defense. Uh, Dietrich Brockett did a nice job of shedding the block there to the outside and making the play on Cahoon. Third down and eight for the Green Wave. This time they send three receivers to the left side. Again, a fumble on the snap, but they pick it right back out. A little screen pass out there to Joe Hack. But Hack is well short of the first down as he's shoved out of bounds at the 41. That was a nice job of Callahan recovering the, the, the fumble and uh, completing a pass for a gain. Uh, that, that ball could very easily just been falling on for a loss, but Callahan had it in his mind that he was going to make something negative and a positive, and in that particular play, he did just that. So another punt upcoming for the Green Wave. And they'll have to use the timeout, risking further penalty. So the clock stops with 4.23 remaining here in the first half. The score, the Sterling Silver Knights, 27. Audubon, nothing. If I were a hotshot movie executive whose job was to program Cinemax for, let's say, October, I would get some really big stars and some major box office hits. Invite Martin Scorsese over to discuss his favorite films. Um, throw in some torrid romance, a few chills, maybe something offbeat, and top it off with lots of classics. And I'd call it a month, October on Cinemax. Now that I've done all the work, all you have to do is call and enjoy it. Fourth down and Audubon punting after their timeout. Each team now has used two of their three timeouts. Bad snap and here's more trouble for the Green Wave. Oh, brother. Sterling's going to get this back on the 30-yard line. They've had a punt blocked. And now they've had a fumble on the snap. Actually, a very poor snap. And so Sterling will get this one back at the 30-yard line. Tony Brown in the play. Audubon's just been making not only a lot of physical mistakes, but a lot of mental. And that's one thing that you won't tolerate if you're a coach. Uh, physical mistakes, fine, but mental lapses you, you have no you have no time for, especially at this point in the ball game, being down by 27 points. The pitch to John Fox. He gets a block. But this time, in fact, his block had him uh, clear to the outside, but he tried to cut it inside, and he was stopped. That's only a gain of two. The view from the sideline of Sterling, where it's been all Silver Knights this afternoon, 27 nothing. Clock running with under 3.30 to play. Here are the first half. John Fox having an extraordinary day, has 110 yards yet in the ball game. It's only the second quarter. Second and eight. They'll give it to Fox again. Gets a big block in there by Miller. Cuts it to the left. John Fox is near or inside the 20-yard line. He needed to get to the 20 for a first down. Looks like they'll mark him just shy. Joe Miller did a nice job of making the block to, 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 to get Fox on his, on his horse there. A lot of times fullbacks go unnoticed as far as blocking is concerned, but he's been doing a really nice job of blocking and being consistent. He has a touchdown on the day as well. Nice cutback by John Fox. Santana sets the offense on third and one. They'll give it to Cliff Jones. And Jones has the first down as he gets it to the 16-yard line. Jones with the first down Santana's been doing a nice job of being the leader on the offense. Uh, I think he's been keeping his offensive linemen as well as the backs in the ball game. Um, he hasn't made many. He hasn't made any mistakes for that matter. Uh, he's been, you know, running his offense very smooth and effectively. Oh, 
on first down another handoff this time to Joe Miller the fullback picks up just a yard as he's tripped right at the line of scrimmage. When Audubon gets penetration they make the play but it's not too often that, that they get the penetration um, like I said lack of consistency has been pretty much the death of Audubon all all the first all this first half I mean they need to start making some plays and start being consistent. They need some big plays. They have some big playmakers on their squad, but they just have to start. They have to emerge to the top. On second and eight, Santana pitches to John Fox. Lots of room around the right side. Fox cuts it in. His fourth touchdown of the afternoon. John Fox is a very patient runner. He doesn't make things they have to be in. He utilizes his blocks to the fullest. As we're, as we're going to see in the instant replay, Santana takes a snap, pitches it. He has uh, Miller up front, and here we'll see the cutback right there. You're not going to bring John Fox down with the arm tackle. He has 131 yards on the day's game. And touchdown runs of 7, 12, 1, and 14 yards this afternoon. Has just about hit his average. He's averaging nearly 140 yards of contest in rushing, and he's almost hit it here at halftime. Pearson's extra point attempt is good and the route continues 133 remaining here till halftime 34 to nothing it has been everything that scoreboard says and more sterling has just dominated this contest from the opening kickoff with the size and speed of uh, the sterling backfield you're not going to bring them down with arm tackle and I mean, once they get rolling, they're very, they're hard enough to stop, but arm tackle just isn't going to do it on John Fox or Joe Miller. Sterling playing a very disciplined ball game. Um, they haven't been penalized that much, and they, they've just been executing very well. They've, they've kept their head in the games, and they're just playing, they're having fun out there right now, and that's what it's all about. I think they're having fun at the expense of Audubon. Well, the scoreboard would certainly reflect that. 34 nothing, just a minute and a half left. Pearson will kick it away. Sterling has had six possessions this afternoon. They've punted once and scored five touchdowns. Audubon has only picked up one first down in the first half. Line drive kick nearly gets away from Hack. He stops it at the 10 yard line. Joe Hack up his own sideline and tackle at the 27 where Audubon will get it with 127 remaining here in the first half. That was a nice job of Hack uh, on the return. He just kept it to the sideline and, and utilized his block. He got really nice blocking by his return, uh, his returning team on uh, that particular, particular play. It's probably been one of the few bright spots for the Audubon special teams. Joe Callahan, the sophomore quarterback, has had a rough first half. Audubon will use its final timeout of the half. And with 109, we will also take a break. 34-0 Sterling. We'll be right back. Guess what time it is? When goblins play and ghoul show and dancing ghosts giggle and glow. You're a ghost. Silly old witches laugh in delight. Kids dress in costume to trick or treat through the night. It's time to tune in to a Disney Halloween only on the Disney Channel. Jack Hibbert along with Scott Taylor back for the final 109 here of this first half. The one thing people have to remember is that Audubon is a very young team and they only return five starters both offensively and defensively. Third time in the afternoon that's been done and the whistle will blow immediately because Callahan recovered that snap with a knee down and of course in high school as soon as you have possession and uh, a knee touches the ground you are automatically down. Will continue to run the clock, however, now uh, under just a minute to play here in the first. That fumble right there is just an, another mishap that's been plaguing 
Audubon all afternoon. Uh, that center quarterback exchange has just been hurting. Second and ten. Quick give inside that time to Randy Robbins, the fullback with one of his rare carries in this first half. Robbins gets across the 20 for a gain of about three. It'll be third and seven. Sterling on defense is very stingy as far as uh, allowing yards, rushing or passing for that matter. They're just sticking right in the gaps and making the, the hits well on the line of scrimmage, not allowing the backs to make any huge gains. I think the largest gain all day for Audubon has been six yards. This will undoubtedly be the last play of the first half with just four seconds remaining. No timeouts for Audubon. Again, Robbins will carry it. This time he loses perhaps a yard. And mercifully for Audubon, the first half comes to a close. After one half a play from Sterling High School, it is the Silver Knights. 34, Audubon nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, all right. They're back. Back in time. Check it out. We're on ancient Japan. New Line Cinema presents uh, It's Wet Willy Time. The greatest pizza twirling. Uh, sword swinging. Here, hold these. Huh? Head banging. Hello. Goodbye. Turtles in history. No way. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. You were expecting maybe uh, the Adam Lee? Ready PG. October on Garden State Cable's pay per view service. Halftime at Sterling High School, and as you can see, uh, a happy home crowd as the Silver Knights lead it 34 to nothing. Scott, of course, the big story has been the ground attack, as it usually is with Sterling, and it's been effective here again this afternoon. Miller and Fox have just been, they've been unstoppable. The Sterling offensive line has done a tremendous job with sustaining their blocks and dominating the line of scrimmage to spring Fox and Miller for large gains. 185 total yards for Sterling, only 40 for Audubon. The festivities at halftime uh, being presented here by the Sterling High School Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Robert Basil. Of course, they are performing selections from Leonard Bernstein's West Side Story. Let's take a listen in.
Nice job by the Sterling High School marching band under the field direction of drum majors Jerron Yoon and Victoria White. Meanwhile, in the locker room, the Audubon Green Wave trying to figure out a way to stop Sterling from marching over them. It's been all Sterling here this first half. 34 to nothing. We'll be back with half action for you right after this. Take an incredible journey through untamed wilderness. Find out what it takes to survive a plane crash in the Andes Mountains. Michael Douglas fights the madness of modern city life. And the Ninja Turtles time travel back to ancient Japan. I'm Pat Shiraki. Join me for Hollywood at Home as we preview the movies and special events premiering in October on First Run. Watch Hollywood at Home Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays on Garden State Cable TV, Channel 2. Football here in 1993, and I've only been able to come up with seven points. Andrew Ellis. Uh, Callahan needs to get things started for his team. Uh, Emerges the leader. He's the quarterback. Although he's a very young quarterback, he has to try to get his offense on track. Kickoff is short and fielded at the 17-yard line through traffic and breaking out is number 31, Andrew Ellis. Ellis had one man to beat, and that man was Ed Guida, who was able to come up and make the stop, but not before Ellis crosses midfield. Special teams play an important part in any, any, any game, and as we see there, Ellis just brings it right up the middle. He got terrific blocking from his special teams, and uh, he if it was not for Guida, he would have broken for another seven. First and 10 for Sterling, the ball on the Audubon 49-yard line. They've been blessed with great field position all afternoon long. Joe Miller, first carry of the second half, across the 45 Miller. down to the 40. Pickup of about six. Sterling's offensive line is just doing a spectacular job. Um, they're getting started uh, nicely in the, in the second half here with, with a nice give to Miller there for five yards. And if they can keep this rolling, they're going to take some time off the clock and they're just going to keep adding points to the board. Give is to the big fullback once again. This time he gets a first down and crosses the 35. Miller with 10 on that carry. He now has uh, over 50 yards of the ball game and one of Sterling's touchdowns this afternoon. Dan Gommel did a nice job of bringing him down. It was too bad that it was after he picked up the first down that that he was tackled, however, for Audubon. They need to start making plays on the line of scrimmage, start getting in the gaps and making the plays on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. Miller again, the ball carrier, and Joe slides forward for a couple. Joe Miller picks up three. Blackison and Winter just doing a, a really nice job of, of sustaining their blocks and, and getting forward forward uh, progress here. Their, the line surge is unbelievable for Sterling. Second and seven as Santana brings the Sterling offense to the line of scrimmage. Miller again. So far it's been all Joe Miller. In fact, John Fox not starting here in this second half in the backfield. Replacing him at running back is number 31, Andrew Ellis, who had that great kickoff return to start things here in the second half. Audubon needs right needs to uh, make a stand right here. They need to stop the uh, strong offense, strong offensive line of Sterling. They need to start making some big plays here. Joe Miller again with the football, and Miller pours his way forward to the 20-yard line for another Sterling first down. where he gives the Knights another first down. Audubon comes out in the second half looking much like they did in the first. Um, they're, they're not being overly aggressive on defense like they need to at this point in time. Uh, they can't play conservative. They have to start taking away from Sterling. First and 10, ball just outside the 20. It's been all Miller so far carrying the football here in the second half, and he picks up another six yards. Joe Miller, ball carrier. 
Santana doing a real nice job of running his offense. He's keeping them motivated and he's keeping them disciplined uh, going down the field, not making any mistakes. Well, as Coach Gallagher said, he will certainly lead South Jersey in handoffs this year. <laughs> as Sterling probably runs the ball more than any other team in South Jersey. But when you run it like this, why not? Another first down for the Knights. Miller has carried the ball exclusively here in the second half. Now with eight carries. And he's taken the team single-handedly now. Over 40 yards here in the second half. And they have a first and goal at the seven. Miller has uh, 41 yards on the day. And uh, <clears throat> he's a big guy, like we mentioned, 6'2", 235. At those 41 yards just on this drive. And he'll cap it off with a touchdown. No, no official mark. They say just short of the goal line. Down to about the one-yard line. Second and goal. So to bring up second down just outside the goal line. Miller has carried nine times here in this second half has 8-2 unofficially on the day. Miller having a spectacular day, not only running the ball, but blocking as well. Well, I think you probably give it right back to the big fullback on this play. They do. Miller spins off his first hit, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Joe Miller's second touchdown run of the afternoon. It is 40 to nothing. And Sterling will try to tack on one more. Very impressive drive once again, Scott. Right down the field after the kickoff. All Joe Miller. I mean, no surprises, nothing fancy. They gave it to the same guy for 10 consecutive plays in the end zone. That's the way Sterling likes to play their football. Nothing fancy. We're just going to run the ball, and you have to stop us. And Audubon has not been able to stop them at any point in this ball game. Pearson's extra point appears to be good, and it is. And Sterling leads 41 to 10 here with 7.38 left in the third quarter. You really have to take your hats off to the Sterling offensive line because they've been relentless as far as blocking this afternoon. Um, they've been spectacular on the run block, uh, springing Miller and Fox for some, spec well, huge gains, needless to say. Miller getting his second touchdown on today. So 41 to nothing. And Sterling will kick it away to Audubon for their first possession of the second half. And we talked about the running game, but one thing that that running game does is take a lot of time off the clock. Only 7.38 and third before Audubon even gets to touch the football. So that clock consumption also quite a weapon of Sterling. It's important now to see how Audubon's offense is going to bounce back uh, after being down 41 nothing and their defense just gave up another touchdown. We'll see how their offense will bounce back. Okay, here's his kickoff return by Joe Hack. Hack will take the kickoff and return it out to the 28-yard line, and Audubon will start there first and 10. At about the I'm sure Paul France, uh, head coach of Audubon, would like to start seeing his team execute a little better and better their field position because they haven't had good field position all day. It's pretty much been a three down and punt series for Audubon except for the big interception on the part of Sterling, but they haven't been able to get anything rolling here. Uh, we're in the first half. Audubon has one first down in the ball game. We'll start it on the ground, and that doesn't start out too well. Is caught in the backfield is Cahoon on a great play defensively from Devin Carter. That was a nice job of Carter shooting the gap on that play and just throwing him down for a loss. That was excellent penetration. 
Uh, Sterling's defense, as we mentioned, has been relentless. They've been very stingy with the run, and uh, their coverage on the pass has been excellent. Second down after uh, the loss by Cahoon, second and 11. Backfield to Hack. He struggles across the 30-yard line for a pickup of three. It'll be third and long once again. Jimmy Chapman makes the tackle. Sterling does a really nice job on defense as far as not allowing any big plays. <clears throat> Midway through this third quarter of play, 41-0 Sterling. Back split in the backfield. They'll give it to Cahoon, and he is popped immediately again by Carter. Also in on the stop, number three, Joe Brady. Pickup of maybe three, but it'll be fourth and five, or at least four and a half, and Audubon will once again punt it away. That's what uh, defensive coaches preach is gang tackling. Um, <clears throat> and after the play, Cahoon was met by a host of Silver Knights. So Hack will go back and try to punt it again. He's had some problems this afternoon, had one blocked that Sterling took inside the five yard line in for a touchdown, had another one right before the end of the second half. Uh, on a bad snap that Sterling was able to convert in points. This one he gets away. It'll take a bounce and take a Audubon bounce as the ball will be down inside the 20 yard line. This will be the worst starting field position of the afternoon for the Sterling Silver Knights, but not to worry if you're a Sterling fan. They have a 41 nothing lead with 451 left here in the third quarter. Audubon's been struggle ball game offensively and defensively. <clears throat> what they need to do is now it's starting, you know, it's time to play for pride here. You, you don't want to be shut out and you don't want the score to be run up any more than it already is. Joe Miller pulls his way forward for the look there at the Silver Knight five. cheerleaders. Miller has done all the running exclusively, and now Sterling will make a change at quarterback. Into the ball game, number 14, Keith Barrett, the junior quarterback, 5'11", 160, making his first appearance this afternoon. Santana did an excellent job this afternoon with running his offense. Hand off up the middle, uh, short game. And again, Miller. it's Joe Miller. Gets two on that play. This time he picks up two. It'll bring up third down and about three for the Silver Knights. Three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. I think we're going to see a lot of personnel change here on the part of Sterling. Um, when you build a 41 to nothing lead, I think your starters have done their job. Yeah. Inside handoff again to Miller and talk about doing a job. This guy has come out and run all over Audubon here in the second half. That's another big gain and another first down for the Silver Knights. Miller has definitely been the workhorse uh, this second half. He's carried them into the end zone in the first offensive series and he's well on his way to doing that again. With a conversion rate of third and fourth downs for uh, Sterling has been Extremely high. They have punted the ball just once. Miller already has 101 yards on the day. And he's done all the running here in the second half. Look at this. Rolls over two or three players. Finally, John Watson stops him in the defensive backfield, but a pickup of 11 and another first down. Right now, the offensive line, as well as Joe Miller, really starting to wear down. The Audubon offensive, well, defensive front, excuse me, as well as their linebackers and defensive backs. Uh, the linebackers really haven't been making the plays. The, off, the defensive linemen haven't been making the plays. 
and it's 10, 12 yards down the field that the defensive backs are starting to make them. Ball at the 49-yard line, first and 10 for the Knights. Pitch, this time outside to number 31, Andrew Ellis. And uh, Ellis struggled to get back to the original line. Of they will mark his forward progress good for a gain of about a yard. It'll be second and uh, long eight. There's a look at Miller taking a seat. He certainly has deserved that as he's been a workhorse here in the second half. He's done a fine job this afternoon behind a spectacular offensive line. Revamped backfield right now for Sterling. Jones and the ball carrier Ellis back there. Drew having a problem as he is pursued very well and drugged to the ground by number 15. That was a very nice job of the Audubon defense stringing that play out. Uh, they didn't give Ellis any option on that play. He tried to make a cutback, but the Audubon defense was right in his face when he made it. That was a nice play by the defense. They need to start coming up with some more of those plays if they're going to prevent Sterling from putting more points up. Third and nine, one of the longest third down conversions that Sterling has faced this afternoon, just under a minute here in the third. A little misdirection, Cliff Jones has it. Jones across the 40-yard line, he's got the first down. Pickup of 10 on a nice run by Cliff Jones. Third and nine, most teams would opt to pass the ball, but when you've been running the ball with such success as Sterling, why pass the ball? Atlanta nothing, the Phillies nothing. 45 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Nice job of Jones bringing that ball to the outside and then cutting back up across the middle. Back split in the backfield. Give this time again to Ellis, and he's had tough sledding running the ball. Drew is stopped by Dan Gomel. Dan Gummel, 5'9", Hounds, is only a sophomore. He's been making some big plays here for Audubon. <clears throat> and he's contributed greatly to uh, <laughs> not allowing Sterling's backs to run up the middle for as much as they probably could have. Second and nine coming up, but that'll do it. Third quarter has ended here at Sterling High School. The Silver Knights with a 41-0 lead, and as we go to break, we honor those outstanding performances by our scholar athletes, by the Brooks Irvine Football Club and the Touchdown Club of South Jersey. Congratulations, guys. One to nothing as the Silver Knights continue their drive. Second down at nine. Ball just inside the 40-yard line. Jack Hibbert along with Scott Taylor. This Colonial Division matchup. Ellis stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. And there to meet him in a big hurry was Dennis Keefe, the nose guard. Number 67, Steve Burke. That was a nice job of getting penetration on the part of Keefe to uh, stop Ellis for no gain. Keith Barrett, number 14, the backup quarterback, brings him to the line of scrimmage. The Silver Knights with third and 10. Cliff Jones got the first down last time. Jones again slithers through traffic, still on his feet, and Cliff Jones inside the 20 yard line for a big run of 19 and a first down. Inside the Audubon 
Jones has exceptional speed, and uh, he just took the ball to the outside and cuts right back up. He's very small, so that makes him very elusive. Hard to bring down. Barrett doing a nice job of taking the Silver Knights downfield first series there. He, he's really emerges the leader in the series, uh, doing a fine job. First and ten for Sterling. Quarterback keeper this time. Barrett on the keeper. But going nowhere is Barrett. He was met in a hurry by the middle linebacker Ed Guida. Clock has stopped at 10.37. I don't know if it's an official timeout or not. Well, I don't know what that was all about. But now the clock will roll. In fact, the clock blew up. The scoreboard clock has gone out here. And now it's back on. Stopped at 10.26. And they may be saying now that the clock is official. There's what it looks like if you're wearing a helmet, I guess. <laughs> Our very own helmet, Cam. Exclusive feature here at Garden State Cable TV. The pitch outside is to Ellis. Ellis caught in the backfield on another nice play by Gaida. He was able to shed that tackle and work his way down to the 11-yard line. It'll be third and five. Sterling proving to get the job done with not just Fox and Miller, but uh, Ellis is doing a fine job along with Jones. Sterling's offensive line has just come right out and dominated the game. First and second team. Fumble on the snap, but they do get the handoff away to number 42, Chris uh, Ferreri, his first Ferrari. carry of the afternoon. On the third down carry. Ferrari gets it inside the 10, but it'll be shy of the first down and bring up about a fourth and two, and it looks like Pearson is out for the field goal attempt. Another six or seven minute drive here by Sterling on this one. They have scored touchdowns on every possession but one this afternoon. So in some senses, I guess for Audubon, I mean, if you're looking for some consolation, at least they keep them out of the end zone. Field goal attempt, this will be a 26 yard attempt by Pearson. Pearson has terrific range. Plenty of leg on this one and right through the uprights. Add three to the total, four nothing with 8.49 remaining. And now with a game out of reach, Scott, I mean, it has been out of reach probably since the first quarter, but I mean, if you're Audubon, I think you just try to put something together. Even if you're playing against the second team defense, you've got to uh, about six more games left in this 93 season. And I mean, there there is going to be a tomorrow after this drubbing day. And you've got to try to build on something positive, I think, if you're Paul Francis Club. Most most definitely. I mean, as you said, you have to you have to find something uh, positive out of this game. You have to learn something. And. It's very hard in lots, for a lot of teams to bounce back after, you know, being down 44 nothing, you know, to bounce back in that game, let alone the following week. So Audubon's definitely, they have to keep their heads up because they do have the whole rest of the David season ahead Pearson of them. Kicking off for Sterling, Joe Hack is deep for Audubon. There you see Hack back inside his own five-yard line, ready for the kick from Dave Pearson, who waits for the official side. Pearson's got a real workout going today with that leg. Line drive kick. Picked up and down at the 25-yard line where Audubon will take over with 8.47 remaining in the contest. Audubon 24. With five minutes remaining in the game, it is Florida State 28, Miami 10. So Audubon will take over. 
Green Wave really struggling offensively this afternoon. Just one first down all day long. Full house backfield for Audubon, and they'll give it to Cahoon, who drops the football. I think has got it back. Seems like uh, if they're not moving the ball, uh, every time they make a mistake, Sterling is right on it, and they pick up another fumble here. And that's something that a good football team will do. Uh, they make the big plays, and that's something that we've seen Sterling do several times this afternoon, both on offensively, both offensively and defensively. Here we see a strip ball. Uh, Cahoon appeared to have a, a nice gain ahead of him and maybe some room to work with upfield. And then uh, one of the Sterling defenders just got an arm in there and kind of knocked the ball right out. So first and 10 for the Silver Knights. The ball on the Audubon 26-yard line. A little quarterback keep by Keith Barrett. There is a flag on the play. Barrett gets the ball inside the 20-yard line before being knocked out of bounds. But we'll see about the flag. It's like it's going to go against on, Sterling, at least the preliminary indication is that. One of the few mistakes as far as penalties are concerned that have been called against Sterling all afternoon. These gals have had plenty to cheer about today, 44-0. Sterling with the lead in the ball with 7.42 remaining. Moves the football back to the lead, 42. Legal block below the knees that time called on Sterling, so that'll be a 15-yard penalty, and actually the net yardage is even more than that as uh, Barrett had the ball inside the 20. Now it's back first and 25. Ball outside the 40. Inside handoff to Ellis. Gets through traffic and may take this all the way. He does. 42-yard touchdown for Andrew Ellis. And six more on the board for Sterling, making it 50 to nothing. And the route continues. That was a great run by Ellis. Uh, he got great blocking there on the right side by uh, Mike Wynn and Blackison. And uh, really sprung. That's great individual effort. Tremendous speed on the part of Ellis. His first touchdown of the afternoon. Fox has four. Miller has two. Ellis with his first. Pearson has a ton of extra points today. He had one blocked, but he's been good on the rest. And it's 51 to nothing. 7-19 remaining of the ball game. Not much you can say when the score is as lopsided as it is, Scott. I mean, uh, Sterling came out in this ball game and manhandled Audubon from the opening kickoff. They blocked a punt to get things started in this ball game after Audubon went one, two, three, and out. That seems like an eternity ago. Converted that for seven points and, in fact, had two touchdowns within the first three minutes of play. And it has just been all Sterling this afternoon. In fact, even the coaches, now all the assistant coaches, there you see a look at the head coach, Jim Gallagher, with the Sterling cap on. But even the assistant coaches, we've noticed, have made their way down from the press box. Yeah, I think you can almost stick a fork in this one. Oh, it, it's been over for a long, it's been done for quite some time, but uh, they keep piling it on, and it's not because they're trying to rub it in. I mean, they're just running a basic, very basic offense. As a matter of fact, folks probably would find it hard to believe that you could be beating a team 51 to nothing and not throwing the ball all day long. Sterling has not attempted a pass the entire game. Joe Hack on the kickoff return, tried to get through a hole, nearly did. Coming over and making a big stop was number 85, Tom Perry. And Hack was only able to get to the 32-yard line. Hack having a good day as far as returns are considered. <clears throat> He's done a nice job of bringing the ball up for the green wave. Uh, 
If you're Paul France, you, I mean, it's really late in the game, but you, you have to see something at least positive out of your offense. As we mentioned before, in the first two games, the Audubon offense is only average points. First and ten as a lot of the starters getting a rest now. Brian Prinz will call it an afternoon as he heads to the sideline. At the end of two, there is no score between the Phillies and the Braves. 6.53 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Big hit on Cahoon in the backfield. A lot of the reserves getting some time now. Tony Brown has his chance in the spotlight. The crowd enjoys that as he makes the big hit. Spectacular hit on the part of Tony Brown. He shot that gap. Came in from the inside linebacking position and just really, really leveled him. So it's second and ten after no gain by Cahoon. Quick inside give this time to the fullback, Robbins. He is able to scurry forward for a few yards, but it'll be third down and about five. That's nearly the longest gain from scrimmage of the afternoon. A pickup of five. Third and five for Audubon. Callahan looks around and will again hand off. Robbins has it. I'll tell you, even the, the offensive execution right now, Scott, looks, that play almost looked like it was in slow motion. Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, you know, being down 51-0, uh, there's no motivation left at all in the Green Wave players. I mean, they look pretty much like they did the first half, kind of most, you know, going through the motions and not very confident. It's, it's just continue on throughout, throughout this quarter. So another punt for Joe Hack, who's had a lot of those today. Fourth at about four. Ball will take a bounce. Sterling will get away from it. And now it starts bouncing backwards. Here's a recovery, and it looks like, let's see what happens. It looked like perhaps, did it touch a, uh, no, it did not. I did not see an official signal at first. I think the Audubon players thought that it touched a Sterling player, and then they recovered. But evidently now the officials having a conference. I don't think that's what happened. There should have been a whistle as soon as the player picked it up, and it looked like all the officials just uh, kind of froze. And uh, they will say that the ball was down at the 35-yard line. That could have been the only big play that Audubon would have had for the afternoon had it been <clears throat> legal. So once again, Sterling will take over with 4.36 remaining here in the final quarter of play. 51 to nothing if you just joined us. You have missed a scoring festival by the Silver Knights this afternoon. Keith Barrett keeps it on the ground for Sterling, picking up a couple of yards. The object now, I'm sure, for the Silver Knights is just to run this clock out. Sterling has really opened up what would look this afternoon to be a running clinic. <clears throat> From tackle to tackle, they just dominated the green wave, and, which opened up the ball game for the running backs to do whatever they wanted. Second and seven, misdirection play inside. Ferrari getting his second carry of the afternoon. Good for a couple. It'll be third and five. Don't forget next week on Garden State Cable TV. More great high school football coming up for you. And uh, I think we can safely say we'll have a little more closely contested contest uh, next week for you. Camden going to Cherry Hill East. Camden just picking up their uh, first win last week. 
And of course, uh, always a tough place to play. Ball's on the ground. Let's see who's got it. Looks like Audubon may have recovered. They do. Be uh, one of the first visits for the Green Wave in Sterling territory today. They recover the fumble with 313 remaining. On that particular play, we had a fumbled exchange, and then once he regained the possession of the football and handed it off, there was another miscue with the handoff. So we had two fumbles on one play. Well, coming into this ball game, we said it right at the top. We knew that on paper these teams did not match up well. Sterling, of course, bringing back a veteran team. Audubon coming in with a lot of young players and inexperience, and then having to go with more inexperience because of injury. Here's Cahoon with his largest carry of the afternoon inside the 35. But I don't think either you or I, Scott, thought it would be 51 to nothing. This has been a very impressive showing by Sterling. No, I didn't think that uh, Sterling would put that many points up on the board. But after looking at their backfield in, in today's game, I mean, you can understand how they could put these points up. Probably one of the most talented backfields in South Jersey. Well, the reason you wouldn't think they'd get 51 on the board is a lot of times they take six or seven minutes of drive so it's tough to score 51 points unfortunately Audubon gave him some mistakes and that helped that'll be a first down for Audubon and with only two minutes left in this fourth quarter that is just the second first down of the ball game and that tells a lot about uh, the offensive afternoon for the Green Wave today for the young players on the offense for Audubon uh, this has definitely been a wake-up call as far as, you know, realizing that in any ball game you, you're going to have to put some points up on the board. Seven points was enough last week, but against a team like Sterling, I mean, had they scored a touchdown in this game, it would just been, you know, to, to no benefit. Cahoon with a couple of impressive time finds the going a little tougher as he picks up just a yard or two. Clock continues to run down to a minute 15 seconds to play. It would be nice for Audubon just to put something on the board. I mean, if you're going to get whipped like they have today, it's nice at least in this closing moments to get something on. This will be a penalty. Number 75, Mike Beach, you can see, was pulling on the play, and he was out almost before, <laughs> before the snap of the football. Sometimes as an offensive lineman, you get a little too anxious to make the pull because you want to get out there ahead of the running back so you can give him a read to make off your block. And I think that time, uh, the Green Wave offensive lineman just got a look anxious to make the pull. Five-yard penalty will make it second and 13. Heads up, heads up, heads up, heads up, heads up, Give us the head guider. Getting a rare offensive carry. He picks up about four. It'll be third and nine and probably bring us to the last play of the afternoon. Tony, heads 30 up, seconds heads to play. Heads up, This will probably do it. Calhoun brings his offense to the line of scrimmage third and nine. Let's see if they put it in the air. Now they'll keep it on the ground with Cahoon. And that will, Cahoon will get inside the 25, but it'll be short of a first down, and the clock has expired on what has been a long afternoon for the Audubon Green Wave. The final score, Sterling 51, Audubon nothing. We'll be back to wrap things up here from Summerdale in just a moment. Stay with us. Hey, batter. At Grand Slam USA, we'll sharpen up your skills in our state-of-the-art batting cages. They deliver accurate, adjustable speed pitches, and our instructors are pitching and hitting specialists. Equipment? Our pro shop is loaded with top-quality gear and expert salespeople. There's even a snack bar. Softball, too. So, make your next hit 
at a Grand Slam USA near you. Come to Grand Slam USA in Mount Laurel, 866-2077. High School Sports Spotlight, brought to you by Grand Slam USA and by Garden State Cable TV. Welcome back to Summerdale. The Sterling Silver Knights celebrating after picking up their third victory without a loss here this 1993 season. And Scott, when the score is 51 to nothing, <laughs> not a lot of uh, analyzing can be done. I mean, we had an old-fashioned blowout here this afternoon, and Sterling dominated from the opening kickoff. They have, at least in one paper in the area, been ranked as high as third, and they certainly look like it here this afternoon. A very impressive win. They seem to be taking off last year where they left off. I mean, <clears throat> they look sound very, they look sound offensively as well as defensively. And I think with a high potent backfield like they have, only good things can happen. Well, so far they're outscoring their opponents by something like eight to four or something like that in, in the early going of this season. If they can keep that going, they may find themselves right back where they left off last year, just shy of a South Jersey group to crown. A couple of running backs, very impressive again this afternoon. John Fox and Joe Miller each over 100 yards today. And as we mentioned, the Sterling Silver Knights move their record to 3-0. and oh. That'll do it. The final score here from Summerdale. Sterling 51, Audubon nothing. For my partner, Scott Taylor, and everybody here at Garden State Cable TV, I'm Jack Hibbert. So long, everybody.